Hey YouTube, I'm Brian from Whiskey Library. I'm Tim from Whiskey Library. And I'm Sniff from Scotch and Sniff. And today we're gonna to be talking about beginner friendly whiskeys. We've done this before, but now we picked some other beginner friendly whiskeys that are also uh, pretty delectable and delicious. Let's start from this side, only because we've got some mixed emotions about starting from the other side. <laughs> but the, um, the McAllen 12 Double Wood, this is a newer release for this year. We've talked about it in our new release video for 2017. It's good. If you like the Balvenny 12 Double Wood, mm -hmm. and it has that mix of um, American oak cast and European oak cast so that you can have that nice little blend of familiarity so you get more of the bourbon flavors and not just solid sherry, this is definitely a solid bottle. Yeah, so if you're not super familiar with scotch, this is a great way to kind of dip your toes in and uh, get comfortable tongue. with some of those. Yeah, <laughs> however you want to put it. Um, it's got some of those great, um, you know, ex-bourbon uh, cask flavors uh, that Wally mentioned. and. Uh, some also the nice uh, sherry matured uh, whiskey in there as well as is McAllen's profile. So yep. give it a try. All right. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. This next one is uh, also going to cause tension. This is the interesting thing. <laughs> that's so right. We've shot a ton of videos. We're not beginners <laughs> anymore, but we're talking about beginner whiskey. That, that's the problem. And so, like, <laughs> this is the problem with talking to people that are obviously drinking a ton of whiskey like myself or like this. I'm trying to, like, this is gotcha and sniff, right? We're trying to find you bottles you can pick up at your store, less than 100 bucks, hopefully less than 50 bucks, that you can yeah. enjoy because you want to get into whiskeys that you're yeah. going to be sipping on. Yeah. <clears throat> this was an early one for me, so I have very mixed emotions on this. It's completely different than Whiskey Library things. So the Glen Kinchy, it, yes, it's a Diageo product. They'll tell you it's part of the classic Six of Scotland, which is just marketing because Diageo. Hard bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, there's so much marketing, it's not even funny. But the Glen Kinchy, it is memorable for its smokiness. It's like it's like a little bit of smoke, and it's a, it is a lowland, but it's smoky in an unoffensive way. It's you're not trying to get into peat; you're just trying to get a little smoke. It reminds me a lot of the uh, I think we've recommended before the Oban 14, mm -hmm. and the Oban is the same way. It's like a little bit of smoke, and then this wonderful sherry right behind it. Yeah, I think I think. The whiskey library might have mixed emotions on it as well. So I mean, Tim's our Scotch expert. Uh, so I'll, I mean, I'll defer, I'll defer to you for a second, and then I'll, and then I'll end the segment. On this. Yeah, I mean, I'll... yeah. As well, I mentioned there is a nice, light little bit of smoke in the Glen Kinchy, but outside of that, it is your typical lowland flavor profile, and that is, you know, your unpeated whiskey. The lowlands are mostly an area where grain is distilled and that's because it was had really close proximity to England back in the 19th century so they could you know mellow out some of the the harsher more intense uh, flavor profiles for some of the malt whiskeys that you're getting farther north uh, but Glen Kinchy uh, has some has some really nice flavors into it it's not for everybody but uh, it's certainly worth a try if you want to explore something from the you know relatively underrepresented uh, lowland region out of all the five five of these whiskeys up here I would choose this one last um, Tell I us think, how you really feel. <laughs> I, th I mean, I do. I mean, I think that all of these other whiskeys have some, something great going on for them at a great entry level. Again, if you're just getting into it, absolutely pick this up. Price point, flavor-wise, it's not going to offend you. But it's not going to offend you. And if you're drinking whiskey, you need to be offended at least once a week. Because that's the only way that you're going to actually develop your palate, in my opinion. Then give it a go, right? And well, yeah, I mean, give it a go, but it's, I mean, it really it won't. You. It, it, well, it doesn't <laughs> offend me. It doesn't offend me, but it also, I think, and maybe it's because <clears throat> of all, like what Wally was saying, all of the whiskeys we've tried. It's just, it's not one that I would necessarily want to go back to, especially when you look at everything here. I mean, I think the McAllen 12, yeah, it's a little newer, so it has a little bit of that going on for it as well. But that, that's a great whiskey, and you know, it's. It's got at least something else in it for me. You're, you're fortune telling. That's a thing, though. It's like eventually these people who are watching are going to get to the point where they've had five, six, seven hundred thousand right. whiskeys. But today, you got to try it. No, and try it. And now, today, I mean, this guy yeah. is drinking Jack Daniels number seven. Today, then this give guy... this a shot. If that's what you're drinking, <laughs> put the bottle down, go out, and pick this and up. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to get then you guys it up. introduce you to some new things. So let's move on. The, we've got the Aberlour 12. This is uh, super beginner friendly. Mm -hmm. It's very sherried. It's not like some of the other Aberlours, like the 18, which is super sweet also, but mm -hmm. um, or like a Bunnid, which is very, very cast strength and you know super, super sherry. Yeah, heavy it's extremely sherry. sherried. This is going to be much more friendly to you. It just hasn't spent enough, you know, as much enough. I would say enough 
it hasn't spent as much time in the Sherry cast, so it doesn't have as much of that influence yet. Right. But it is definitely on your way. And also, it's got a much higher proportion of the ex-bourbon casks in there. That's yep. one of the reasons yeah. where you're not getting uh, those, you know, dark, rich flavors that you may be experiencing from other uh, sherry casks. Yeah, that's what a lot of these brands do to make it a little more familiar to the people who are drinking, you know, cheap bourbon now or cheap, cheap American whiskeys. Like, that's how you get them into the yep. sherries. You give them a little bit at a time, and then you... It's definitely worth a it. try. Buy <clears> both <throat> of these, try this, and then try this. And what I'm telling you is, is that the extra sherry in here is just the right amount to kind of add a little bit of the sweetness that I think no matter what you're drinking, you're really going to enjoy. You'll start to favor that. Absolutely. Uh, next up, we've got the Old Pulteney 12, <clears throat> which you'll remember. Uh, I think I've got blog posts about Old Pulteney. The distillery is just amazing. It's awesome. It's, it's a heck of a drive in Scotland. To It's like one of the most northern distilleries. I think they mm -hmm. used to be the most northern. On the mainland, yeah, yeah for sure. But now, yeah. Um, well, not including the islands. I think yeah. it used to be the most northern on the yeah. mainland, but I think now Wolfburn, Wolfburn yeah. yeah, it's just a little bit further north, and they're finishing theirs in Lock of Willem. That'd be a good beginner. It's a whole different issue. <laughs> yeah. But here we are, the old Pulteney. So this is classic to me, classic space side. Like it's got a touch of salinity because of the location. Yeah, for sure. But it's mostly apples yeah. and it's mostly tree fruit and just very, I don't know, it's, it's forgiving. And you know, as, as Wally said, the the salt is something that really stands out as far yeah. as Brian and I are concerned. Uh, you know, aging right there on the North Sea really adds uh, some nice uh, complexity to uh, what is otherwise, you know, a pretty young whiskey at 12 years. Um, but another cool little feature is that if you look at this bottle, it's shaped exactly like how their stills are. They've got this uh, this little <clears throat> bulbous uh, part on the uh, on the neck of the still, and so it's a cool little uh, little tidbit that you can bust out, <laughs> little knowledge bomb for your friends. And if you want to get super nerdy about it, their low wine still, where they do the first distilling, is actually flat topped, just like this. It doesn't have a lineman's arm that comes off the top. It's literally flat topped, and it looks it's the it's one of the weirdest stills I've ever seen. Like up close, I was like, wait a minute, that's not even shaped right. <laughs> Is that so, a still? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take it to a whole nother point there. So uh, ignore the knowledge bombs for a second. The reason that I think that this whiskey is so approachable is uh, Tim and I brought it out with uh, a group of friends who I don't think at the time were really into whiskey. Um, and I want to say about maybe three hours later, the bottle was gone. Yeah. Um, wow. it was, I think it was New yeah. Year's though, Brian. It was New Year's. It was New Year's. <laughs> oh, so there was some celebration <laughs> going on. So, but it was, it was. It was one of those where everybody really enjoyed it. I think that... You know, it being kind of a very... Um, friendly? Yeah, it was a very, very friendly whiskey. Very easy drinking. Easy for drinking, sure. but it had a little bit extra, you know, like that, that, that what salt What's going on in there? What happened to offensive? <laughs> oh, wait, we're getting there. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, this is the problem with trying to do a beginner whiskey video when you had a ton of whiskey already. To me, I think the Glendronic 12 is super beginner friendly. I really do mm -hmm. think the amount of sherry in it Though it is quite a bit, I think you can handle it. I think not yep. only can you handle it, I think you'll fall in love with it. Apparently so, there are people that disagree. Well, so I mean, if sherry is something that you want to experience, the, the Glendronic 12 is a great place to start. Obviously, the three of us are well versed in a lot of their older expressions, and those are where we like to hang our hat right now. But the 12 year um, it is just light enough that you're not going to get overwhelmed with some of those dark, rich flavors that you get in some of the older versions. Obviously, the more time in the cask, the more you, you soak up those uh, oak and, and sherry flavors. So this is a, a great place to start. And you know, we're big fans of Glendronic anyway, so it's easy for us to plug. Huge fan of Glendronic. Uh, I, like Tim said, absolutely love them. I think that out of everything here, this is probably your, if you do enjoy this, I mean, everyone should enjoy this. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I think that in terms of a beginner whiskey, this is starting to become like your midterm or your final exam, right? I mean, these four, obviously very entry level. I think that, you know, they're easily enjoyable by everyone. This could get a little too sherry for some. I don't think it is, um, but I think that if you're just starting out, if you start here, it may be similar to starting off with like an Isla where you may, it may turn you off too soon. Um, so I, I would I would argue if you haven't yet experienced sherry, start with the twelve. I mean, buy both of these twelves, yeah. but try the Aberlour and then go to the Glendronic and see where your taste buds and uh, your taste profile go. But I mean, I think everything up here is absolutely. We hope delicious. you get there. These yeah. are all solid. So 
Uh, let us know what you think about beginner whiskeys. We've done one of these videos before and you guys seem to love it. It was well received and you guys had a lot of questions and you guys made a lot of suggestions of what to pick up like this Glendronic and this old Pultney are actually suggestions that you guys made. That's awesome. So, um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking to pick up more bottles that you guys are suggesting for beginner whiskeys. And in the meantime, uh, comment down below what you think they should be or if you've tried these and what you think of those. Yeah. And then Whiskey Library, how do people reach you? So you can reach us uh, online at uh, whiskeylibrarydc.com or uh, we're on Instagram over at whiskey underscore library underscore DC. It's a lot of underscores. It's a lot of underscores. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. We'll see you soon.